Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I am showing you my top five favorite low-cost electric bicycles. Now these are not necessarily the cheapest e-bikes out there, but they are the cheapest e-bikes that I've tested and that I would recommend to my own friends and family. Now before I start, I just want to say this is not a sponsored video. None of the companies that I'm going to mention here paid to be in this, nor do I think they even know that I'm making this video. I will have links down below the video in the description if you want to check out any of the bikes that I'm going to showcase in this video. And if you do want to get one of them and you use that link, that will help support my channel and help me to continue creating more free content like this. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get to it. The first low cost electric bike that I'm going to recommend is the one I have right behind me. This is the Rad Mission from Rad Power Bikes. For some quick specs here, the bike has a 500 watt motor, a 500 watt hour battery, and gets a top speed of 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. Range is somewhere around 20 miles on throttle and 40 miles on pedal assist. The thing I love about the Rad Mission is that it distills an e-bike down into basically the only things you need, yet it still offers all the things that you love about Rad Power bikes. So despite the low $1,095 price point, you still get a huge company with good customer support, you get quick shipping, a huge suite of accessories, a large owner's community, etc. This is a single speed bike, so no shifting gears here, and it also is a non-suspension bike, so you don't even get a suspension fork up front. Basically, this is a very much urban electric commuter bike. That being said though, I've still done some light trail riding on it, and it works great, you just don't get a nice suspension fork to soak up the roots and the ruts. For just 1100 bucks though, I think this is a really great deal to get an awesome e-bike from a reputable company. The only downsides to me are that you don't have a digital display, so you don't have any speed or distance readout, and you don't have any gears. That being said, I find that I don't really mind the lack of gears because I mostly ride in either flat Tel Aviv or flat Florida, and even when I do hit hills, the throttle helps me overcome the struggle of single speeds, which is that they often aren't geared very low. So all in all, I really like this e-bike as a simple urban commuter. You definitely will want to add the kickstand option though, since it doesn't come with one as standard equipment, which is admittedly kind of annoying in my opinion. And next up we have the Ride One Up Roadster V2. This is by far the cheapest good quality belt drive e-bike I have ever seen, and the belt drive is really what sets this e-bike apart. It's still a cool e-bike outside of that, it's got this nice minimalist hipster spec vibe to it, but the belt drive is really the key here. It's quiet, it's grease free, it's a zero maintenance drive system, it's never gonna rust, it's just a really nice component to have. It does make the bike a single speed though, since the hub motor is in the back and there's no internally geared hub, so this is another bike that you're not going to be able to shift. Some quick specs here, we've got a 500 watt peak motor, a 250 watt hour battery, and a top speed of 24 miles per hour on pedal assist. There's no throttle on this one, so I hope you don't mind pedaling. The motor is quite peppy though, especially if you use one of the higher power pedal assist settings. I also love that the battery is totally integrated into the frame. The upside there is that it creates this stealthy e-bike that looks really great in my opinion. The downside though is that the battery is kind of small at just 250 watt hours. Still, because it's pedal assist, you get decent range of around 20 to 35 miles. The only other downside of the integrated battery is that you can't take it out of the bike to charge. The whole bike only weighs 32 pounds though, which is pretty much nothing in the e-bike world, so it's easy to pick up and carry inside with you to charge if you needed to. This e-bike also saves money on a few components, like having simpler caliper brakes and no integrated lighting or no kickstand. The brakes are 100% fine though, so don't feel like you need disc brakes. These definitely work well. I would have liked lights and a kickstand, but I can add those myself. For just 995 bucks, this is an awesome bike for the price. Next, we have a bike that some of you probably guessed was going to be on this list. That is the Electric XP from Electric Bikes. The Electric XP is a classic in the low-cost e-bike market in the US. This e-bike has crazy good value. It's priced at only $899, but it has a 500 watt motor, big fat tires, a top speed of 28 miles per hour, and an integrated 480 watt hour battery. Again, not a huge battery, but it works just fine, and this is of course a budget e-bike. The fat tires also help soak up the bumps and sort of make up for the lack of suspension. One thing that amazes me about the Electric XP is you actually get decent components thrown in at this price. 
including a rear rack, fenders, and a kickstand. Plus, this e-bike is a folder, so you can fold it up and throw it in the back of your car to take to your favorite riding spot, or more easily bring it on a bus or a subway. It's not a fancy e-bike, but it offers a lot of bang for your buck. Next on the list, I have the Ecotrick 500 watt fat tire electric bike. The Ecotrick 500 watt fat tire e-bike is another one of those not fancy but still gives you basically everything you need in a simple e-bike kind of e-bike. At just $885, it gives you a basic fat tire bike frame with those 4 inch wide tires, you get a 500 watt rear motor, and a 36 volt system with a 468 watt hour battery. In my testing I got it up to about 23 or 24 miles per hour, and I also did a lot of dirt riding in addition to just plain old street riding. The fat tires really come alive in the dirt, and even though it doesn't have any suspension, it still offers a decent ride. Remember, this is an $885 e-bike, so you can't ask too much of it, but it definitely offers fine performance for the price. The 500 watts isn't crazy powerful, and I did have to help it when climbing the biggest of hills, but the throttle-only performance was fine on small hills. I'd have loved to see some simple LED lights that run off the battery included, but I can't really fault this basic e-bike for not having some of those features at this price. All in all, it's another really good bang for your buck option. Last but not least, I have the Rad Runner from Rad Power Bikes. Yes, Rad Power Bikes got two e-bikes on this list, but what can I do? They make two awesome e-bikes that are both really affordable. The $1,199 Rad Runner is the only utility e-bike on this list, and what I really like about it is that its moped style frame setup makes it great for both a pleasure rider or for utility tasks. I can fit a few kids on back, which my nephews happily helped me demonstrate, and I can also take the bike off road thanks to those wide tires, which aren't quite fat tires, but they're not too narrow either. The step through frame is also really accessible, making it good for short or long legged riders. The 750 watt motor and the 48 volt 14 amp hour battery give it both good power and good range. The only downside is that it's a single speed, so again, you're not going to be able to shift gears, just like on the Rad Mission or the Ride One Up Roadster V2 we already talked about. But come on, you still get this awesome 20 mile per hour utility e-bike that is definitely worth the price. All right, so that's it. Those are my top five low cost electric bikes. Each one of them I have ridden extensively and each one I love riding. I think they're all just an incredibly great example of a bang for your buck e-bike because they give you so much potential, so many different types of riding, and they really don't cost that much compared to the industry. Last but not least, before I go, I just want to announce the randomly selected commenter for my last video that will win the giveaway. And the winner is... Barry Duncan. So congratulations, Barry. Just let me know where to send your book. And of course, let me know which one you'd like. You can choose from all four of my books. There's DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, and Electric Motorcycles. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And for anyone who doesn't want to wait that long to get one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time.